A lot of people say to us, you know, isn't all the stuff that you teach just on YouTube? Probably, yes, yeah, but you're gonna have to shift through about hundreds of hours of content to get 100%. it. I'd rather pay 50 quid and have it handed to me on a plate because you're gonna save so much time. Buying and selling, you can never go wrong. That's not, that's- Age old. Mate, that's been yeah. going on since the beginning of time, so. A lot of people I've heard in Seller Circle recently have been going back to the leads that we sent in. Mm -hmm. October, November. Mm -hmm. Have you had a look at doing that yeah. yourself? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's a secret gem. Ah. <laughs> well, it's out there now, cats out the bag now. But no. So, guys, welcome back to another Seller Circle podcast today. We're here with Shane. Nice to see you, Shane. Shane's one of our members from. Seller Circle, uh, you've got quite an interesting background from you know what you did before, what you're doing at the moment with Seller Circle. So we're gonna have a chat. We're also gonna go out and do some retail arbitrage afterwards, aren't we? And make a little video about that. So let's have a chat about Seller Circle, how you've been doing so far. Give us a bit of a rundown on where you're up to with Amazon at the moment. Yeah, everything's going great. Um, buying new leads daily. Uh, venturing more so into online arbitrage from retail arbitrage, which I initially started out with, um, which has been great. And um, yeah, just packing boxes, getting items in each and every day, and just trying to stay consistent with it. Okay. Right yeah. And what so like what kind of like revenue are you pulling in like at the month at the moment? Like you know, in terms of like sales and stuff. Yeah, I'd say on average, it's probably about four to five k a month. Mm -hmm. um, it's been month on month progression, which is great. I'm really happy with that. Um, and I think this is the first 10k month, hopefully. Nice. Um, probably on about seven and a half, eight k for this month. Oh, so absolutely amazing. You'd love to see, see it. a 12k at this month. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, in terms of you know how much you like, you know your margins and stuff on that. Like, what's the profit looking like on you know? The yeah, so it's probably about 35% ROI, given all my uh, X's and stuff like that, all my softwares, yeah, um, shipping costs, etc. Probably about. Let's say 30%. But, yeah. say, yeah. It's about average across the board, though, and, you know, yeah. that's what you should be expecting, you know. It's one of them things, it's like, you know, it is a money game with it, you know, you do need to, you know, have cash to invest, mm -hmm. you know, to put into, you know, buying products to sell them and, you know, make money from that. And, you know, how much did you initially start off with? Uh, I think I started with 1500 mm -hmm. Um Slowly putting a bit more, like, invested more, like, proof of concept. Once I could see it working and I was sending items in and they were selling, I was making, you know, a little margin on it and, Confidence just grew, so naturally I just put in a bit more. Um, just got to get used to the process initially. I that's mean, it, I think, yeah. Like you were saying earlier, we see people usually putting in, you know, 500, 600 pounds just into their first sort of order. As soon as they see that money come back, they see the orders coming in, people get so excited, they're like, right, now's time to let this. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's a buzz. <laughs> like, honestly, I've wanted to throw more at it, but it's just the, the fact of I don't want to run before I come walk yeah. kind of thing. 100%. Um, you can get carried away very, very easily and up buying too many items. Yeah. You know, you see something that sells 20 times a month and you're yeah. buying 40 yeah. of them. That's <laughs> where you do not want to be yeah. because that cash is just tied up. Yeah. You've got to, you know, I'd rather people buy more products and less of each product and then you're reducing your overall risk as well. So do you remember that feeling you had from the very first sale? Yeah, I think it was like overnight, to be fair. Was it? <clears throat> yeah, so I'd woke up in the morning, just at like one sale, seven pounds, somewhere else, <laughs> just like buzzing. Um, so yeah, it's a good feeling, to be fair, and it's that dopamine hitting it. You're yeah. just like, want One, some more of that. <laughs> 100%. Once you make that first sale, it's just like you would like instantly like, oh, like you're hooked on it, and then that more start coming through. You're there checking your phone all day, it, oh. checking your Seller Central app. It's crazy, and it's just... It's just one of the things, once you actually know that it works, it's like, it sounds too good to be true, really, doesn't it? Like, what, what did you think of it, like, when you initially started and, you know, what you heard about it? <sighs> to be honest, it's something that I looked at, like, probably about five years ago. Um, obviously, after stopping playing football, which we might touch on, um, I was just looking at different things I could do, and online was seems to be, like, the way everything was going, you, you know, and... Um, that came up, like doing the old YouTube search of yeah. how to make money and all that stuff. Yeah. And, um, that came Amazon up. was quite heavy on that. Yeah, it was, it was big, but I was just also aware of like all the clickbait guys and, yeah. you know, I just thought, a lot of it out yeah, there and it just mm -hmm. did look too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So with that one, I just put it on the back burner, but then obviously seeing your guys, um, well, seeing your um, interview with, I think it was CEO, CEO Cash. Cash yeah. yeah, I was like, this guy seems pretty genuine to me. So 
let's check out Appreciate what these it. guys have got going on <laughs> now. And, uh, yeah, and like I say, it's like, it's not easy. It's simple. 100%. We like to put that across because I think nowadays people try and make things seem so easy. Yes, you know, you've probably made thousands overall from it. That obviously 18K that you've done in total, that's not profit. I'm sure everyone can work that out and knows that. But that's not come with no work. I always see you in the success channels and we can pop up some here of you late night, early morning with your boxes ready to go. Yeah. And it is work. It's not something that just comes overnight, is it? So uh, There's definitely graft involved. So anyone who thinks they're just going to like click a few buttons and make it's make work, sales, yeah. it's not it's not going to happen. So, um, But it's rewarding. So yeah. anything worth having made, you're going to have to work for. So. It's, it's one of them, it's, it's quite a labour intensive hustle, but you know, with the labour that comes with it, it's very like scalable and sustainable. Like, you know, you know, you might go out buy, you know, a couple of hundred units once you're actually like experienced with it, then you've got to come home, label all the units up, stick them in a box, you know, remember what's in each box, create a shipping plan, get them shipped off. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> shipping them off is definitely the the like the hard the longest yeah. bit, like where you know you've got to pack all your boxes and stuff like that. Once everything's like, you know, boxed up and stuff in you're cracking on all you're doing is adjusting your prices or going out finding new products you know it'd be amazing if you could just like magically get everything in a oh, box and so just like it's like click your fingers so and it was all yeah. packaged up cheese, yeah. tetris in it you're just like oh that's <laughs> yeah. and then you're taking them all out <laughs> <laughs> literally even though you're only paying like four to five pound with a box don't you think if you can't fit that last yeah unit it's like one, it's one isn't it? that's it like yeah. one unit of, the, of that item where there's 20 of them in a box and you've got to put it in with something else and it's just like but yeah, I'd say the worst part about it, to be honest, is doing the inventory, like, yeah. you know, multiple boxes. Putting it into and, Amazon. Oh, yeah. That's tedious. Wait till you get yeah. onto doing pallets because <laughs> then it becomes even more yeah. fun. <laughs> this is when the missus is going to come in handy, <laughs> for sure. How many units or boxes do you reckon you're sending off at the moment each week <sighs> on average? Probably about 20 to 30. Really, really? Twenty to thirty. Right. Say, yeah. So you really are scaling up. Like yeah, that. I'm ramping it up as of like from the last month, um, because just like I said, naturally, I can see the I can see the sales coming in, can see the pro progression with like you know the revenue proof that of I'm concept earning. Proof you, of you, concept. You, in a way, you're keeping on testing that. It's not just you test it once. Yeah. You really want to keep knocking on the next door, knocking on That's the next it. door, and as soon as you're yeah. seeing it's still working, right? Okay, let's throw some more in. Yeah. Thing. So it's just growing and growing. Um, but yeah, probably about 20 to 30. Um, I've, I have got a goal of doing like a minimum of five per week. So see okay. that lands me at 20 for the month. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if I can, I'm just getting as, as many, many out the door possible. as possible, to be fair. I want to see the UPS driver at my, at my door every day. That's the goal, to be fair. 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm sick of seeing him. He's probably sick of seeing him. <laughs> so it's one of them. I can imagine there's a lot of people in the same position, just constantly, like, shipping off boxes and stuff like that. But one thing that Jake did as well is, you know, when he actually started to scale up, you started to, like, hire your friends and stuff to come and, like, package boxes for you. Um, how did that go for you? Was that, like, did they ever, like, mess it up? Like, what was going in each boxes and stuff? Not, not really, because I wouldn't just... some. Sometimes I'd leave them. If they yeah. knew what they're doing, I'd send them to a storage unit, let them know what to do, and they'd do it. But at the start, I'd be there with yeah. them, but we'd all be packing. So I'd say, yeah, get these four, put them in a bag, repeat that a hundred times and put them into boxes, and they'd be fine with it. <laughs> but it would just save me so much time. Rather than me packing for three days, I could pack for one day, yeah, course, have my yeah. mates there, have a laugh, and then I've got those two, three days to go and do wholesale sourcing. So economically it's so much more worthwhile so it's definitely something to look into later down the line yeah I, I, get the message drag the messes into that's it. it that's <laughs> it I, I think to be fair she's willingly like happily would do it like she's i've seen her just starting to like get stickers from the printer and oh, i'll okay. just hand them over to me so like without just actually asking her she's it. just like <laughs> dipping her toe in so that's good to be fair and what? i was i was what? thinking about getting my niece like my niece and nephews and stuff because they're like okay i don't know 14 15 but i'm just playing with it as to whether they're a bit young at the minute but be some good it's work just experience boxes, from them as isn't well. it? it's good work yeah, experience yeah. you can get them involved they can make some pocket money alongside it and you know it frees up some time for you yeah. rather than spending three hours a day packing a box maybe it's just one it's just a little bit easier and to be fair I actually don't mind doing the sticker don't, yeah, you that's alright you know, yeah. the sticker is alright right. right, apart from yeah. the TK Maxx items like oh mate you I don't know what they put their stickers on with but <laughs> it's just like they don't come off <laughs> do you have any uh, tips for anyone because I see a lot of people struggle getting labels off do you use Heat guns, very liquid. Is there any crazy you know, substances I do. I, that you use? I get like the, 
what do you call it? Like the wash, the, um, the dish cloth. Right. Well, I don't do, well, I actually do do the dishes, but <laughs> uh, that's a lie. Get like a hot dish cloth, uh-huh. just put it on the product. Obviously, it loosens up the, right. the glue and then just give it a bit of a scratch. Doesn't look great. The ideal work. world, you just peel it off and it'd yeah. come off straight away, but that's just... So it, it, it doesn't matter as long as you know the barcode isn't scannable or whatever it's fine yeah it's just those security tags that we don't really yeah. want on there because customers will then think oh has it been stolen what's going on here why are they mm-hmm. still on there that's when you run into issues but anyway tell us a little bit about your background before amazon where did it sort of all start in the working world for you and how did that lead you into amazon in a way yeah so um i was a professional footballer throughout my whole life pretty much up until the last three years mm-hmm. um, when I decided to step away from football but from I don't know since I can remember up until definitely age nine when I went to Man City's academy at nine nine wow. yeah so <laughs> I signed my first contract at nine which was like a four-year contract which was quite a big thing at the time um, which kept me on and then I just progressed through the ranks um, got close up, up close to the first team things didn't work out there so Hopped around loads of different clubs. I think I was like uh, considered like a bit of a traveller in the football <laughs> community because I just couldn't find a I couldn't find a home to stay at. To be fair, uh-huh. uh, a club, but no, gained some really good experience. Had um, had good times playing, but um, the direction I wanted to go in in my life at the time just didn't align with continuing playing football. Okay. Um, there's a multitude of other reasons as well, but the main thing was just that. Um, I just wanted to take back a bit of control over my own time, yeah, m- my own life. Um, everything's laid out for you as a footballer. It's just—it's not easy. The job's not easy, but you're kind of sheltered. You're in a bit of a bubble. Yeah. yeah. Um, everything gets taken care for you from bills and phone contracts, cars. Oh, like, I see what you mean. Yeah. Do you yeah, know what I mean? You yeah. just don't grow as a as a person, if that makes sense. It's like. Is that because they want you to be putting so much time and effort and just completely been focused on your training and doing yeah. better? So yeah, that that's it. I think they do it from, from a good place, to be honest. Uh-huh. Um, they want you to perform to your optimum yeah. um, on the pitch every single day. So yeah. obviously they've got loads of staff that handle everything for you. Like you say, it just takes... Food and meals. Yeah, exactly. everything's done for you. But then it's like when you go out into the real world, and what I mean by that is when you go to example from Man City to Northampton which uh-huh. is one of the steps that I took um, from one of the top clubs in the world to like League One um, with all due respect it's a great club but the facilities and the help that's on hand is not the same so true. all of a sudden you're just scratching your head like <laughs> what am I going to have for tea like you're cooking, <laughs> cooking like beans and toast and stuff Massive. and it's just like you're trying to do a phone bill or trying to rent out an apartment that but because you've been doing that since you're nine people are probably thinking like how does he not know how to do a phone book? You've got no clue. Yeah, literally. You've, no, you've it's, always, yeah? It's madness, honestly. Um, Never thought about it like nah, that. I didn't, all. I didn't. Yeah. What, what does like a schedule look like, like when you're actually a footballer in terms of like... It's pretty intense to be fair. So um, obviously professional, you're doing it every single day. You might get one day off a week. So you train Monday to Friday, game on Saturday or Sunday. Um, Depends at what level you're at, but majority of the time you you training or playing six days a week, one day one day rest. Um, you could train multiple times in a day, two three sessions a day. Um, so quite intense. Um, short days, obviously, in compared yeah. to your like nine to five job, but it's very intense. Very intense it's very demanding, time, obviously, yeah. physically and more so mentally, because you've just got to be at the top of your game every single day. Yeah, I suppose so. you've got to be fit and healthy and stuff like that. Do you know when you like training? Do they have you going to like the gym as well? It's like training and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so it's not like bodybuilding, pumping yeah. weights. It's more just like injury prevention. Yeah. It's like tedious stuff that obviously like the public would never see. Yeah. But it's just like you've all got your individual programs, um, depending on whatever issues you've got going on or whatever. Um, you've just got to crack on with that. Um, but yeah, everything's scheduled, so you just everything's laid out for you. It's, it's really good. But like I said, when you go to the real world, yeah. which is like you know, um, the lower leagues and things get tough, you're just fending for yourself, yeah. and it's like nobody's there to tell you you should do this at this point. And it sounds bad. You shouldn't need to be told what to do. But once you've, if that's all you've known from a kid, you know, then it, yeah, you it's, can just really, it's just a bit tough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, is what it is, mate. Crack on. Yeah, and um, you know, you know, when you was actually like playing football and stuff. Obviously, you know, as times changed, did you find that you like met like entrepreneurial people like through it and stuff like that? 
Yeah, to be fair, I mean, it's quite frowned upon. It's changing a bit recently, but it's quite frowned upon that footballers have another interest outside of football. Is it really? Yeah. Um, who and makes I, that frowned upon? The people who are looking after you within the club? Or yeah. into football, you know, other footballers as well? Yeah, no, not, not other footballers. I'd definitely say it's kind of like the owners. Um, I suppose for that reason. The people in charge, I think, because you're an asset to them, aren't you? And they just want to make sure that you're giving your entire efforts to the club because obviously they are paying you wages and yeah, yeah. you know it is in, in a in a way it is right but you've got so much free time on your hands after football mm. think about it, you're only training from nine till maybe one two three yeah. o'clock and you've got that oh, whole of rest of the day yeah. you know and it's only so much fifa you can play yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, if you've got a message you can't even do that so it's like <laughs> you sat there next to your missus for all day but no um, yeah it's a bit frowned upon but it is changing now because there's been some some guys that have just kind of bit the bullet and Definitely. had loads of media backlash and stuff for doing it but um, in America it's, it's fine everyone in America it's just accepted like you can be a, a, a an online sensation like a YouTube sensation yeah. and that's fine because it's just building your brand isn't it but again it's England it's a bit it's a bit different yeah you got to kind of fit in in England, you know what I mean? It's like any hair, like Pogba with his haircuts, like he gets ripped, doesn't he? And it's like, it's just a haircut, to be fair. It's yeah, it's it mad. doesn't make a difference how he plays on a, on the pitch. But So, you know, after you was like playing football and stuff, at, at what point, you know, did you want to like stop playing football? And, you know, how did it go after that? Like, what was the whole process? Yeah, um, it was probably over about a three-year period, to be fair. I didn't wake up in the morning and one day I just like didn't enjoy football. Mm. Um I think one of the main reasons was just like multitude of um, injuries that I sustained. Um, I just c couldn't really get over a few of them and it was just reoccurring and then yeah. I'd get back playing and I wasn't at 100% and um, you know I'd be out on the pitch feeling like a shadow of myself to yeah. be fair and mentally that just had like a bit of a toll on me over time. Um, you know and there's a few other reasons. I think one of the main ones was that um, because I'd been doing it for so long I think the flame just naturally died yeah. out a bit. Um, just not as passionate about yeah, it as just was, were. Yeah, just wasn't as passionate. And it wasn't like I was going out and doing crazy things and not being professional. I was. I was doing the exact same things I'd always done. Yeah. But it just wasn't getting the same outcome. Yeah. So it was just like something has to change. And then I just, I don't know, I think just innately I just had a feeling that maybe it was time to just try something new. Yeah. Um, which wasn't easy to come to terms with because obviously my identity was football. Yeah, was football. That's all I'd known <laughs> literally from like a kid. Um, so that was a bit of a tough one to be fair. Um, so, you know, when you was actually like going to quit and that, what was, what was kind of like going through your mind in terms of like, you know, I'm going to like stop playing football. What were, what were you thinking like, was you thinking like, what am I going to do after this? Like after I've stopped playing? <sighs> yeah, that was it. Yeah. Um, I got really no GCSEs, very, very few anyway yeah. from school. I stopped going to school at like 14, just to yeah. basically football had me in, um, playing like full time um, from that young age. So education was just out the window yeah. to a certain degree. So I had nothing to fall back on in, in terms of that. Um, so I think the only route to go was like, <clears throat> excuse me, was like the entrepreneur route. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just seeing some. I, I literally dipped my toe in all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Did you? Um, what what us, kind of yeah, stuff? Tell yeah. us a bit about what you've tried. I think the first thing I went into was um, my stepdad. He actually approached me with an opportunity um, to do network marketing. Okay. Which wasn't really didn't really align with like who I was because I was quite introvert to be fair at that time. Um, as you could guess, going football, going sitting in your house, like you're not the most, <laughs> you know, out there person in the world. But no, um, it was good because it like got me out of my comfort zone. Because I what one of the main reasons why I stepped away from football was that I wanted to like grow, keep growing mm -hmm. as a person, not as a footballer, as a person. And you know, when he come with this opportunity, and it was like everything to do with personal development and. Um, all the courses were about networking and meeting new people. I thought this is good, like something new, it's different. One, two, two, yeah, yeah, it's way, different. Yeah. So I give that a go, and that went really well. Um, actually, ended up building quite a successful business with that, um, which is still going now, to be fair. But um, after that, um, and that was actually in the crypto space, believe yeah. it or not. So obviously, as as the um, market took a tumble, naturally, um, I had less and less to do with that. But yeah. Um, that's coming back around now, which is good. 
But other than that, I tried my hand at trading after that, mm -hmm. which so many people have. Obviously, I went straight in the deep end, leverage trading. So yeah. I was like borrowing money. And that was good because it was like giving me a buzz. Because yeah. like the adrenaline I got from football, I still like wanted yeah. that. You needed and some sort of a high Yeah, I didn't yeah. get that from yeah. like going to the gym and stuff. Um, so that gave me that. But obviously, lost a load of money in the, um, in the process, but yeah. learned loads as well. So... So what was you doing with that? Was you like in like a signals group or was you just like making your own trades? No, I actually had a mentor, um, yeah. a guy in America. Um, he done day trading um, and it's pretty tedious, but that's what I needed. I need something that I could put loads of time yeah, and energy into, into yeah. especially coming the from. The more you put into it, the more you get out. Of it. Yeah, so I'd learnt loads, but I wasn't at the point of being profitable. And then I was like, I'd built up a quite a good nest egg from when I played football. Yeah. I dabbled in property. I bought a few properties and stuff like that. Uh, luckily, I uh, didn't go out and <laughs> spend all yeah. my money, but um, I had a bit of a nest egg. So I knew in like the next two to three years, I've got a bit of play around time to find my feet in something new. Um, but obviously, as time went on, it was like crunch time, and then yeah, getting more and more. Yeah, change, and I was yeah. losing money with trading, and I was like, this is probably not the right thing to do at this point. Maybe later on down the line. So I put that on the back burner, um, and then Amazon came up. Yeah. So it was just like, honestly, perfect time. Like, couldn't have been a better time to like literally see the Amazon opportunity again. And you saw it through CEO Cast, didn't you? The podcast yeah, that we yeah. did with the, him. And um, then just got straight involved with the group, didn't you? Mate, I literally took action. Like, as soon as I seen that podcast, I think the same day, I joined Seller Circle. <laughs> Um, had a few issues getting set up. I remember because I looked when I DM'd you about coming to the office today. I was looking at the top the of our DMs, <laughs> and the first thing was, "Mate, can't get this to work. Yeah, no I'm access." Okay. I was like, "No, like, I literally wanted to sign up that They've day." They've scammed us. Nah, nah, I, didn't, I knew you weren't doing that. We weren't, weren't going to do that. I'd seen a few of them, and I knew. Now that's a great thing from being in the crypto world. Like, I know what a scam is. Yeah. I know the red flags when I see yeah. them. So obviously, when I see new guys, I was like, "Nah, this is this is mint." So. Um, yeah, just cracked on, took action. And to be honest, like my situation really just didn't permit me to like keep testing the waters with stuff. Yeah. I just had my first child and obviously that's a bit of added pressure if you look at it like that. Um, and I didn't want to go and get a nine to five. Yeah, um, I can imagine. Nothing yeah. against having a nine to five. I've always said if I had to go and stack shelves, like believe me, I would. You've got, got yeah. no. Especially now you've got a child there. Yeah, yeah. and it's just like life's, like real at this point I've yeah. got miles to feed so uh, you've got to do the work I've got to yeah to there's point, no choice no and anymore. I'm like I'm I'm a proper sucker for like starting something and not finishing it yeah. like yeah. I'm like always flip flopping around and I just said to myself like I'm definitely going to commit to this obviously after the month trial and seeing it going really well I was like I'm all in so at this point I'm all in to be fair yeah Amazing, I bet that feeling, you know, when you actually found something there. Yeah. Because it's very like, it's nothing like trading. It's very nah. just like, once you actually understand how it works, it's very straightforward and you can just see how there's like a clear path to just keep, you know, scaling and building yeah. up. I bet you was kind of like buzzing with the opportunity <laughs> there to actually like, you know, come around. And I suppose there's probably people in, in a similar position to you, you know, who need to do something. And, you know, not like they, they don't want to do a 9-5, but, you know, there is this other option there. Like yeah. you can literally start Amazon FBA now. Like you can invest, you know, five hundred thousand yeah. pounds. Crack on, and you know you can put off that, you know, nine five, and you you can go down this route and like believe as well. It actually works. Like yeah. it works so well. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Like how did you find it at the start? What was like the issues that you faced at the start? Issues was probably probably myself to be fair, because it was like in my own head, like, I don't want to start something again mm -hmm. and then not, like, see it out. Yeah, and it not work. Yeah, or... and it not work, so I was just, like, humming and ahhing, and obviously the 9-5 is stability, and I was, yeah. like, that's always in the background, like, you yeah. know, yeah. for any entrepreneur when things are not going well or you're just starting out, it's like, no, come with me, do you know what I mean? So I was, like, <laughs> trying to push that away. Um, do you remember what it was like, like, the very first day you were in the server? Were you like, because there's a lot in the server, isn't there? Were you quite overwhelmed? Did it take you a little while before you brought your first product and you sort of learned? Or? No, it was really good. Like, the layout, I thought, was, like, really easy to use, to be fair. Okay. I'd been in other discords, like my trading discord. That was, like, information nice. overload, yeah. mate. There's <laughs> pings going off everywhere. You just like, what's going on? <laughs> but, no, I came in yours and, obviously, straight to the user guide. That just explained everything. Um, and yeah, I just cracked on with that. Like I didn't jump from room to room again because I'd been in other discords and had other experiences. Don't try and jump to like 
um, point Step ten, yeah. like the very end. Yeah, big yeah. believer in that as well. Honestly, because I've done it myself. So just slow yeah. down. <laughs> just, chill just read the user manuals first. I think a huge thing for us is like the customer flow. How 100%. a member comes in, where they go first, because that's going to affect someone's overall experience, whether they're completely overwhelmed by all the information, or whether they think, oh actually I do this and then I do this and then I do this and then I'll know everything and I can start buying Absolutely. things and that's how we kind of have a quick little interlude here guys unfortunately we lost around 10 minutes worth of footage from this podcast due to these very frustrating cameras which is so annoying but we're going to jump back into the podcast now it's not going to be where we were so I apologize for that but we're going to get talking about the buy box Shay's future plans etc etc it's going to be a good one I'll see you in a bit so I think like one of the most important things that, that you know is like a factor of you know selling on Amazon is like the buy box and stuff. So like if you could explain to everyone, Jay, you know, a bit about how the buy box works and you know why it's so important to understand. Definitely. So I'll explain it in a moment. When when you started, I guess, with the buy box, I suppose this term, the buy box, what the hell is the buy box? Did you know what it was? Was it something that you sort of had to learn over time, how you get sales, etc.? I know you said you'd been one of those undercutters that we <laughs> Tell people not to do in the Discord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, honestly, um, I obviously come across the buy box when I was looking through the user manual, uh -huh. um, and it obviously tells you very clearly what it is there. I just didn't know um, how exactly it operated, yeah. um, you know, and how to like maximize it to to bring you in as maximize more sales, sales as, pos yeah. as possible. Yeah, so penny undercutting was definitely something that I'd done. Um, not intentionally, but I just wasn't clear on like if it's something that you can do in different instances or it is, it is like literally what you say on the user manual, do not undercut and just stay at the, at the buy box price, yeah. <laughs> now I know. Um, now I'm selling obviously larger quantities and stuff and I see people bricking the price, it's like, don't do that, do you know what I mean? Just Tell her a noob yeah. seller. Yeah, That's noob seller. Really say. <laughs> I think everyone's undercut, come on. Yeah, 100%. Everyone's done it. And there's places when it is acceptable. Yeah. If the price has dropped, you want to get your money out, yeah. you have to undercut. But anyway, to take it back for these people who are listening and probably thinking, don't know what's going on, the buy box is essentially the box on a listing. So when a customer wants to purchase a product, they'll go on the product and they'll click buy. Now, that box, that whoever, whoever gets that click, whoever gets that order is rotated around multiple different sellers depending on set metrics. Now, those set metrics will be most importantly price and also delivery time and then you've got customer feedback as well most people have got 100% customer feedback or close so it doesn't really make too much of a difference but the buy box will be given to whoever can actually provide that best offer so whoever's got the cheapest price and whoever's got the fastest delivery time now you do Amazon FBA don't you that's sending products into Amazon they fulfill orders for you next day delivery so most people will have that top tier can't get any better delivery it then just comes down to price so if you come on a listing and there's five other sellers on there at 9.99 if you come on there at 12 pound you won't be getting any sales at all you're not going to be making money you're not going to be making sales because there's other people on that listing who can provide the customer with a better offer a better deal so you need to actually price at the same price other sellers are at in order to make money we said just then about undercutting and why we don't like people doing it because if you then come on there and went at 9.98 Everyone else would then not really be getting all that many sales, so everyone else is going to go to 998. Some people may get annoyed and go to 997. A new seller may come on and think, oh, I'm not making money at 997. Boom, eight pounds. <laughs> and that's how products reduce down in price from immature sellers who don't know what they're doing at the start, which is, again, I think for us why with what we do with Amazon. We don't just want to teach people, make sales, make sales, get your money out, get those high screenshots with all those sales on there. It's not about that. It's about the money that you can actually make and doing it in the right way, not to annoy other people and to keep it more stable and long-term because if you keep reducing prices down, you're not in there for long-term, you're in there for that fast overnight cash. So I suppose as time has gone on, has that become more apparent to you? Have you realized, oh, you know, this is really much more of a long-term game rather than just those quick flips yeah um i come across a really good quote the other day and i think it was um is it revenue for vanity profit for sanity yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and it's just like that's absolutely it obviously i was one of them I, you want to post your success you obviously want to do loads in revenue and stuff like that yeah. but it's at the end of the day if you want to build we're, we're in this to build a profitable business exactly. you know what i mean you can do as many sales as you want and 
You've barely made any profit. Well, I mean, you, we could have someone who posts a screenshot of £10,000 in sales. They could have lost two grand. You could have had a screenshot of someone who's posted £2,000 in sales and they've made three, four hundred quid. So, you know, it does depend on that, doesn't it? It's all about making like a, a sustainable and like scalable business. You know, there's tons of other side hustles you can do out there that can, you know, earn you quick cash and whatnot. But that's one of the greatest benefits about Amazon is that it is like scalable and sustainable. And that's what we like to teach in Sales Circle is how to do it like the right way where, you know, you you are going to make consistent profits and you know it might it's not it's not something that's like it's not it's, it's time consuming don't get me wrong you know it's going to take you time to package up items you know box them off you know and you know learn about how everything works to do it properly but that's part of the game once you actually get rolling with it you know you, you're on to a you know a great winning streak and i imagine there's something that you know you've been on that kind of journey and how did you find it at the start did you find all these different like features and you know things like that like overwhelming yeah, it's still stuff now that I don't quite understand, if I'm being honest. Um, I think that's just going to take me, I don't know, however long it takes. Um, but I think that's good, though. Like, I'm glad you're saying that because it shows that there is so much value provided in there and you've still got more to learn. And if you're doing the numbers you're doing right now and you still don't understand certain things, think where you'll be when you've got a top-tier understanding of everything. That's it. I think the fundamentals is what I'm really trying to focus on. Yeah. Like, what is a profitable product? Um, being consistent in my sourcing, uh -huh. um, you know, purchasing the leads that you guys provide, making sure that I don't go a day without checking the leads because it, you know, the business runs on being able to find new items yeah. to be able to sell. Um, so keeper, keeper graphs, that's another thing that I've just been hammering at the minute. Um, so really just your fundamentals and obviously knowing your numbers, um, that's a place where I really want to zone in and yeah. on, zone in on now and um, know my figures to the to like the decimal point. Knowing the, like you're in inner business numbers, how much you're spending, what profit are you actually getting out after all you're spending through your bank? Have you spent this on a membership, this on poly bags? It's so important and I think a lot of people just look at the profit they're making from their Amazon account, they won't factor in anything else and sort of just like, oh yeah, that doesn't matter, I'm making X amount. And then you can get carried away with that very very easily can't you I i've noticed myself do that as well like not wanting to actually number crunch yeah yeah, mm -hmm. like, yeah. it's the anxiety of it you don't want to actually find out because you know it's a fact you're not making as much <laughs> yeah. as it says because you know there's other costs involved yeah. but if you can bite the bullet and do that once you start doing it once or twice you'll get to that level where you are happy just getting into continuously doing it and that's where you get to the level of creating more of a sustainable long term business. It's good practice, isn't it? It's good practice. It's starting with good habits and good practice. How do you like track like, you know, how much you're spending, you know, what are you using to do, you know, all like the tracking and you know, keeping track yeah. of all your profits and stuff? Um, so I've trialed two different um, tracking tools really, which one was Sellerboard. Recently I've moved over to SDK, which is Seller Toolkit obviously. Um, because they've got a repricer, which yeah. is something that I'm looking to introduce pretty soon. Uh, again, going back to the buy box, that should help me obviously be at the buy box more often. Mm -hmm. Just quickly, just to explain to everyone if you can, what a, what a repricer does, because people are thinking repricer, what the hell is that? Yeah, well, as far as my knowledge allows <laughs> me to understand, um, what it does is it basically tracks um, the different items that you've got in your inventory, um, and it will match those items, depending on what rules you set it, um, it'll match the buy box, for example, um, of the lowest FBA seller. Um, and then that'll allow you to obviously get maximum sales because you're constantly at the buy box rather than having to do it manually. Mm -hmm. There's loads of times at the minute I'm checking my inventory and I'm like a penny off the buy box. Or But you may have been a penny off for a day Maybe, if you haven't yeah. checked it for a day. So in a way, reprices can be very good as long as you're not using them to undercut, yeah. as long as you're using them to match the buy box, you're not, you've got a limit on there so it doesn't go too low where you're losing money because otherwise people can just push your price down. But it will increase your business's revenue and profits as well because it's increasing your cash flow rather than you not having the buy box for a couple of hours. That could be five units that you've missed out on selling over 50 different products that you've got in stock. It's going to get that cash back out fast to put that into more products which you're then going to get a return on investment from so getting all this uh, as intricate into it as you can is really like the, the art form of it really and that that's the stuff that excites me as sad yeah. as that is to say just optimizing things yeah, yeah and i wouldn't have had the capacity to do that a month ago or maybe even two weeks ago just because my focus was like that's a bit more advanced i'd say a repricer yeah, when you're definitely. just starting out like i was a few months ago 
uh, my main concern was selling my first item. I think that's the way you should approach it. Just go step by step. Don't look at what somebody who's selling a hundred k a month is doing because you're not at that point. Hundred um, percent. They've got a lot more experience and been doing it for a lot longer. Yeah, that's it. So. Um, Asking questions is, is another thing. I'm always in the uh, the live support chat. Like, wow. honestly, I'm asking 10 questions a day. Um, okay. And it's great because nobody um, has an issue with that. Like, Yeah, I, th I think people pe people feel bad. People mm -hmm. always say to me when, at the meetup, they were like, mate, I'm so sorry. Like, you must get sick of seeing my name. I'm like, no. For, for us, we, we were just saying about this off camera with Seller Circle and Amazon. We were saying, you know, for, for people who join Seller Circle, we're, it's incentivized for us to help them out and ensure they're doing good because that helps Seller 100%. Circle as a brand and as a business. The more members that we can have coming out of Seller Circle doing better, fantastic it's, it's even better for it's better for seller circles so if you're in those live chats all day you're asking questions you're getting that further knowledge so you can run your business at a better level it's we always yeah. advise it you know we have support staff and, in there for that reason and i think it's one of probably the most valuable features in the platform because you know you can read through all the guides and everything and you can start like selling and whatnot but then no doubt you're going to have questions that are like individual to you or things that just aren't like super clear in the guide. not they're not super clear but they'll be like individual things you want to know and i was um you know, telling, you know, Shay how, you know, when I started, I was very lucky because I was just sat next to Jake all day. He was teaching me Amazon and I was just asking him like questions every single day about the most random things. Like I'd be asking him about OAR, I'd be asking him about wholesale, like how he does this, how this works, you know, like all the best methods, all stuff like that. And I think that's the greatest feature of Seller Circle. It's just being able to ask whatever you want. It's, it's, it's a priceless feature, really. There's not many other things out there that, you know, where you can get that kind of, you know, just one-to-one -one support from limited. People you know, who know exactly, you know, what they're on about and stuff like that. And there's a team of them as well. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing to be fair. Like when I sit here and think about it, <clears throat> like the value that that offers, like and how quick the responses are, like it's just mind blowing. Like to find an answer to a question that I can get from Seller Circle in five minutes, for example, yeah. sometimes it might be an hour, sometimes it might be a few hours. But if I'm to go on YouTube and find that out myself, I'm gonna have to go through hours and hours of content you don't know if it's right it's from it's right. someone different maybe not in the uk a lot of people say to us you know isn't all the stuff that you teach just on youtube probably yes yeah but you're gonna have to shift through about <laughs> hundreds of hours of content to get 100%. it i'd rather pay 50 quid and have it handed to me on a plate because you're going to save so much time it's all been written by the same set of people we all know what we're doing it's all coming from the same place yeah. it's going to make your life a hell of a lot easier and i think it's just paying for the convenience of it but also mm -hmm. someone there to sort of hold your hand through the process as well yeah literally i'm just like what does this mean um the other day i had a counterfeit product uh, a counterfeit complaint Claim, yeah listing just went <laughs> mia i was like what yeah, does this mean heart just drops <laughs> Just do this or, you know, just click no on these boxes and it's just like brilliant. And so, some of those issues are so complicated. We wish we could put them in the user manual, but the user manual would be uh, a Ages, short yeah. novel. Yeah. Yeah. We would have people join, see that and go, nah, not for me. It's going to be a week to read this. And, and you know what? It's just like, don't think about the problems that are going to occur. They're going to, they're going to occur. It's inevitable you'll have problems, but they're fixable problems. They are, yeah. Yeah. So you know when it comes to like, you know, problems and stuff like, what kind of like problems have you faced when like starting Amazon? Fair, if I said there's probably one problem a day, I'd probably be telling the truth. Yeah, like, yeah. there is little things that come up each and every single day, whether that's like, with my, I know it sounds daft, like problem with my printer. Mm -hmm. I remember that was the first roadblock I actually oh, hit. I was probably like, get problems with my printer about five times a day. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> so getting, annoying. This, getting the uh, labels printed out properly and... You got a thermal? Thermal, yeah. So... Headache. I don't know how I managed to do it myself. I'm quite decent on a computer, to be fair, but I can imagine someone who's not like, oh, that would just be a, a nightmare. But yeah, I'd probably say figuring out the printer, the labeling, um, ungating, mm -hmm. um, getting my head around that. Um, which have you ever had any like, issues with ungates getting like rejected and stuff? Oh yeah, 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 so I actually had one item where I had to do it like 10 plus times. Really? Yeah, and, yeah. and then like, just accepted. Time, like yeah, just accepted. Didn't so. change anything, did you? No, I just Happens accepted. Happens all yeah. the time. Um, Most ungates I feel like don't get accepted straight away. I think it's getting better now. Mm. When I used to do ungating when I first started, it was like just the norm that you had to submit it like 10 times. Really? Just till someone was like, yep, yeah, all right. Wow. Yeah, probably got some better systems in place now. Yeah. But, um, mine just fly through now. 
Yeah, um, much easier and quicker. Yeah, do you yeah. find you got you get auto ungated on more things now because you've been doing some volume and you've been on the platform yeah. for a bit longer? Yeah, so I do get a lot of auto ungates. Um and then I don't know if it I don't know if I could recommend this, but recently um I've just been basically sending in at the beginning, I had to send in a pro- picture of the product, I've noticed, with the actual um, invoice yeah, or, yeah. in order for it to get on gate. But at the minute, I've just been sending, like, sort of... When I purchase online, I don't even get an invoice, so it's, sometimes you have to request an invoice. Yeah. Um, you get, like, a retailer. purchase receipt. I just get a purchase receipt. I kind of crop that out, uh-huh. see how many units I've got on there, make sure I've got the um, uh, the company's heading on there, and then that's been getting accepted, so... Uh-huh. Interesting, don't interesting little jig that, there. Don't recommend no, it. I don't recommend that at all. <laughs> but I've just been trying it and it's been going through. But again, that's probably because of like my sales history yeah. and all that's built up. Just be careful because sometimes, rare, but they do call the person. I have actually had a missed call. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking when I had that missed call, yeah, I was like, is my account suspended? Mm. <laughs> anyway, it's still in operation. It's, not it's still in operation, so fingers crossed. Sometimes they'll call the retailer as well, or whoever it is you're buying it from, mm. to say, has this person brought from you at this time with this order number? So Stop that. That's insane, just be careful with that. It? But yeah. I imagine it's obviously very rare. But I think it'd be good to like touch on like what ungating actually is for mm-hmm. people who don't know. If you're a beginner watching, yeah. You know, for anyone who doesn't know, ungating is essentially when you have a product. Let's say this mic stand. This mic stand is by Rode. Rode will put basically like a gate on there, so a new seller with a new account couldn't just buy this from a shop and sell it on the platform. Usually because it's a big brand item. Big brands don't want people selling fakes because you could probably quite easily buy a fake one of these mm-hmm. in from China. Yeah. You don't need the little road icon on there. It still do the same thing. And you'd be buying it for, you know, a fifth of the price yeah. that you would from a wholesaler. So that's why they protect them. It can also be certain categories like baby toys, mm-hmm. uh, baby food, obviously. You know, if there's an issue with that food, if it's fake, if it's inauthentic, it's going to be on Amazon's yeah. head, whatever happens there. So what you all essentially need to do is buy, um, you know, 10 of these mic stands from a authorised distributor or a wholesaler. Some retailers work as well. If they do give you a VAT invoice, you can then provide that invoice to Amazon, take a photo of the item and Amazon will then verify, yes, this is actually legitimate. Then you'll be ungated and you'll be able to sell those products yeah, moving and, forward. And I think one thing to note on there as well is like if you want it, you, you only have to ungate for a certain brand, don't mm-hmm. you? Once you ungate for the brand, you can sell it pretty much everything. Every single product yeah. on the, um, you know, Tommy TP, these, for example. Yeah. If you ungate in Tommy TP, it's not too expensive to do it. A lot of the time, you can send the goods back as well. You can then continuously sell Tommy TP. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I recently did a Tommy TP ungate. I think it cost me about twenty five quid. <laughs> but the amount of like Tommy TP products out there that you can yeah. sell is is, is so. And I imagine you know Shay's probably sold a lot of them. What what did you find? Have you got like a most popular brand that you've been selling? Probably a category to be fair, which is probably health and beauty. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that seems to do really well for myself. Um, but brand? No, I think I've just got an array of different brands. Brand. It's the be best honest. way to be rather yeah. than just having one, definitely, yeah, because definitely. you know you're going to find it hard to keep finding that if yeah. it's not on clearance throughout the summer or whatever. You know, you want to be as diversified and as spread out as you possibly yeah. can, really. Yeah. How have you found like online arbitrage as well? Like, I know you said you recently dabbled in that mm-hmm. a bit more, and you know you just kicked it off with RA. But how have you been finding that online? Good to be fair. Um, it's obviously a lot less. Time, it's not as time, it's not less time consuming because you can put in the same amount of time in RA into OA, but it's a better, I found it's a better return on my time mm-hmm. invested. Obviously, yeah. when I'm driving around, sometimes yeah. I'm going to different stores, they've not got the product or they've only got so many of the item. Um, Try 20 minutes right, just to get one unit, yeah, yeah, it won't even cover you for You've got mileage costs. Mm-hmm. Um, Stuff like that, so sitting in traffic, like it's just not, it's not ideal. It's wasted time, I suppose. It's wasted time. Sourcing online. Yeah, so you just source, sourcing online. I just found it's a lot better return on my time in, invested, and um, so much more storage you can access. Obviously, yeah, just that, the, the luxury of more, being yeah. in your house, nice and yeah. warm. So, um, I've enjoyed it. To be fair, um, finding a lot more deals, just messing around with different strategies, different sourcing strategies. Just to be getting fair. used to it is yeah. one of the main parts. What I found is like. Some a way of sourcing may work for one person, but may not necessarily work for for myself. Um, so I'm just kind of zoning in on that. I think I've found a few ways in which I've been able to consistently find obviously profitable items. So um, just cracking on with that, and it can be a bit laborious, especially when you're doing manual, going through yeah. clearing sections like. 
but then just finding ways to just um, become more efficient with it. Um, yeah. I've got a great tool, which I think it's Amazon Quick View. Okay. Um, which, when you go on Amazon's um, page, you can search any brand and it'll tell you straight away how many FBA sellers are on it if Amazon's on the listing. Yeah. So straight away, I can just see, yeah, that could be a goal. That's definitely not a goal. So just becoming more efficient with my sourcing, really, is what I'm doing now. What we teach massively in the wholesale mentorship, which <coughs> we've talked about loads, really, is it all comes down to time efficiency. Yeah. Everything comes back down to that time efficiency, especially, I know you're in a more fortunate position, you've got more time to spend yeah. on it, but a lot of people, you know, working, you know, nine till nine each day, doing whatever, you know, it can be, if they've only got an hour or two a week or they've got five hours a week, yeah. that every single minute of that it's time valuable. is valuable yeah. and it needs to be put in the right place. And even if you can just dip up your efficiency a tiny amount mm -hmm. and cut out things which you shouldn't be doing, yeah boom, you'll see it in your revenue and you'll see it in your profit so yeah. quickly and it can become very addictive in a way to get to that most efficient level, which yeah. you'll probably never get to, but it's just actively working on it, really. That's yeah. going to improve your business as a whole. Mm, and, I, and I think a good point to home in on there as well is, you know, people, you know, obviously say you're very lucky that you can spend a lot, a long yeah. time, you know, you spend, you know, most days doing it and stuff like that. But a lot of people, you know, who are Sell Circle members, they just do this on the side of their actual job. Mm -hmm. You know, they a lot of people are doing this as a side hustle. Um, and, you know, that's the best thing about it. It's up to you how much you do, how much time you put in. The more time you put in, the more effort you put in, the more you're going to get out of it. And it's one of them things. It's not like the ceiling is the ceiling's almost so high that you can never you can almost never hit it really yeah. like because you can you can start with OARA go on uh, you know start with RA because it's very simple to go around and you know we show it a lot on the um, your sales circle channel yeah. of you know like finding products and stuff like that but you know, you can then go on to OA, and then, you know, you can go from OA to wholesale, and then the wholesale is just, there's so much opportunity there, and then, you know, and eventually, you know, you, if you're wholesale, you know, you feel like you complete wholesale, which I imagine is probably not possible, yeah. you can go into private <laughs> label and stuff as well, there's just so much avenue, there's so much there for the taking, it's, yeah. it's incredible, there's not really much out there like it, which has got so much scalability. I think a lot of people worry coming into it, maybe this was a worry for yourself, because, you are, you know, older. Well, no offense, you're not, not ancient, are you? But getting on, you, I'm getting you, on. You, you wanted something that you can know that it's yeah. not just like, oh, you know, I can sell a few things here and there. You wanted it to be something that you can really put the time into. Yeah. And I suppose until you got started, you never really saw the full potential of it. And oh. now you've thought really, well, blimey, you know, if it's just me, I'm never even going to get to that top ceiling like you said. So yeah. that's a fantastic part of Amazon as well. It's good for people who want to put an hour in a week. Yeah. Also good for people who want to have a team of, you know, 50 different people yeah. and running a huge wholesale business. Do you think that's something that you would like potentially like go down in the future? Like taking this into like a, like a real, like, you know, a, a proper, proper business, you know, hiring people in to you know work on it with you pack stuff up you know source products you think that's the kind of way you want to take it yeah i think that you know i've got a very um i'd say like abundant mindset so i'd never want to limit myself definitely starting out like you know when people ask me like what numbers you want to achieve you might ask that question in a minute but you know i'd never say something small i would always put like a big mm -hmm. number out there just because why not you know do you know what i mean it's um it's all possible it's all possible so why not do it and people have done it so again that's proof that it can be done yeah, so exactly why um, don't you want to do it i yourself? think then i think naturally um the more i take on the more help i will actually have to go out and get so uh -huh. you know I'll probably start building a team and the, you know the business will grow as a result like we said earlier even just getting like VAs to yeah. sort your invoices for you yeah. because that's probably quite a time consuming thing as well yeah, isn't I it? can't stand that task so that's definitely <laughs> first the one first on the thing list. on the list yeah, to get out of at the moment how much time would you say you're putting in each day into yeah, Amazon it's probably about probably 7-8 hour day to be really? honest really okay. yeah, it's not far off a working yeah, yeah, day yeah. so um, I could definitely get more productive with what I do during that day. During those um, hours, yeah, yeah, and just really work on streamlining and being more um, scheduling when I do yeah. things. Um, like you say, just but you early on, you're so yeah, early to yeah. you're still learning, still like you figuring said. out it's, everything. It's, yeah. it's time. Time will come with that, and you'll think, you know, those eight hours I've done this much. Look at what you do in a year's time in eight yeah. hours, yeah. Because you'll be speed demon on the computer. But yeah. Um, Looking forward to growing it. 
as big as possible, really, to be fair. Like think, you said, go on. I think it's an exciting thing, to be honest, and I hope that people watching, you know, who are doing it as well, it's like, it gets me excited to even just like, think about, you know, it's like, to actually scale it up and getting people in and getting a team in and stuff like that. I think it's one of the, like, greatest things that, you know, people can achieve, like, you know, it's just, it's so, like, prosperous, it's, it's yeah. crazy, it's absolutely insane. The level you can take it to is just wherever you like probably never any of us will see there's only yeah. a small percentage yeah. of people in the world who will ever take it to that level yeah. um, anyway like you were saying mm-hmm. you said I may ask you in a moment mm-hmm. what numbers do you want to eventually achieve What? what give us some <coughs> sort of time scale with it as well is there a number in your head that you want to get to in a year is it you know six months What? what is it for yeah, you yeah so I've actually like drilled down and got like pretty specific like daily goals monthly goals yearly goals okay. um, so that goes down to like sort of how many new items I need to be getting per day um, what kind of revenue I need to be doing on a daily basis so um, but the ultimate goal for this year would be 100k by the end of the year okay. um, and then obviously I'd be going into becoming VAT registered stuff like that and I'm sure there'll be loads of oh, different of hurdles that is, mate. And, yeah, <laughs> that'll come with that but again not to shy away from it's all the challenge I mean, yeah um so 100k, I think, is definitely achievable by 100%. the end of this year. At the rate you're going at. Yeah. And then seven-figure seller, like, that yeah. would just be unreal, <laughs> like, to be a seven-figure seller. Why not? So I remember when we had Rachel and Ash in. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what numbers they were saying they were going for, yeah. but they now have said they'll go well, well above yeah. that. Yeah. The same with Oliver. Yeah. Oliver said to me in the podcast that we did with Oliver, can you remember when that would have been? For like a good few months ago. I think it was, before, was it before Christmas? It would have been before Christmas, yeah. It would have been sort of end of last year. He said to me that, like... In, in 12 months since he started, remember he started in October, he wanted to do 100k and he surpassed that already. Yeah, he's and it's March. Since his last post, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's done like, oh, I don't know, some silly numbers, man. Yeah. The thing is with Oliver, he works like a full time job as well. And, you know, he actually has a different business on the side as well, where like it, it, nothing to do with Amazon. He does that and he's still smashing Amazon FBA to the level where he's I don't making think he 30, sleeps. 40k. Okay. I don't know, yeah, know how he does sleep. it. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. He needs to. He needs to get rid of his his job, in my opinion, and just uh, n- nail it on it. Take this opportunity, in what he's got, because he can. He can really take that to an unbelievable level, and he's an unbelievably smart guy. I've known him for a long time. It's, yeah, he's a really, really great guy. But it just shows where you can take it to. Like he started. Like he he started the other day. Like. I did a TikTok with him and he was like, this month I'm making like 33K and starting Amazon FBA three months ago. Like, wow. Like 33K revenue. So, you know, the profit on that's looking at like seven, six, seven yeah, grand six, profit seven grand in a month. Mental, mental, mental it's stuff. It's life changing, like massively life changing. Silly money when you look at it. At it that is. Level. But even still, I think the thing is with people who do Amazon, you'll probably never live a seven grand a month lifestyle yeah. because you're so obsessed with it. You'll put that seven grand straight back, back in, in there, yeah. And 100%. you know, you'll you'll still be just keeping your expenses to a minimum. Yeah, go and get a nice car, do what you want to do. But I think yeah. like reinvesting into the business and growing your business as sort of like you said, football has brought you sort of like, you know, that bit of a nest egg. Yeah. It's the same with Amazon in general. That whole mm-hmm. business is another asset, yep. isn't it? And just building up the level of, you know, pound number, I guess that <laughs> is essentially. Yeah. That's the overall goal of it. There's enough out there, isn't there, for us all, so just get as much as you can, whilst you can, <laughs> that's the goal. Yeah, 100%. Definitely. And there's just so many other places place to take it, like, you know, once you've exhausted away, out of it, straight into wholesale, yeah. just crack on with that, and, you know, and, and I think it's crazy how all of us doing them numbers, and, you know, you're, yourself, you're doing them numbers just from, like, deals, really, like, that's all that it kind of is, it's like, you know, cheap products that, you know, are more expensive on Amazon, it's just, uh, just arbitrage. yeah, it's crazy, and it's just such an easy way to get involved with it, just going out to stores yeah. and whatnot, it's crazy. It's just mad to think, how much people buy and what they buy. Yeah, like, tell. People just buy anything, it seems I like. think one, one of the biggest things is people who, you know, we have phone calls with before they join Seller Circle, they'll go, I just don't understand why someone would, you know, th- there'll be something in the shop for £5. <laughs> I can then sell it on Amazon for £15, take off my fees and I'm making money. But even still, why would someone buy it for £15? And that was something I had to wrap my head around at the start. But I think it's just the fact that there's so many people in the UK... People will just think, oh yeah, I search it on Amazon, 15 quid. Yeah, that's all right. Not yeah. because they've got loads of money in the bank, just because they just mm-hmm. think, oh, that's the best price. You've got yeah. to remember, most RA, yeah. we're not just buying at a general price. You're usually buying it at a cheaper yeah. price. Not everything, yeah. though. Would you say, in terms of percentages, how much of your stock is 
clearance sort of one-time deals mm -hmm. compared to how much is just running the mill it's always been the same price it has been for yeah. the last year i say a really small percentage to be fair i mean i've I've had a few Buttes items which has had like silly return on investment, like one-off purchases, like you say, in yeah. sales, but they're not replenishable items whatsoever, exactly. so exactly. Um, I'd probably say about 5% are like one-off really? bangers, and then the it's rest It's a very is, good sign though, that is. Yeah, and the rest is, I've been able to pretty much replenish big majority of like what I've got mm. in, in my inventory. Very, so, very good. I mean, a lot of them are not like crazy profit per unit, but it's just... Um, high sales, high volume. High sales. Um, and I just don't want to turn my face away from, from <laughs> money that's lying there and that's on the table. So definitely take advantage of those replenishable ones. Um, and again, I'm always just on the lookout for, um, you know, different products to buy. But um, if it's there on the shelf, I've definitely just got, got to take, take it. Care. <laughs> I can't not, even if it's like, and I'll, I know people have different uh, criteria for obviously their sourcing and stuff. Um, but roughly could be for more me, lenient with it. Yeah, time, I'm a bit yeah. more lenient just because I'm 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 a new seller. Um, I just want to get my money in and out as, as quickly as possible, so I don't want to hold on to stock and stuff. I think so. even still, you know, if you're looking at if you usually not go for anything less than a two pound profit per yeah. unit, you go for something that's one pound fifty. Worst thing comes to worst, it drops by a pound. You're still making 50p it, yeah. or you're getting your money back out or you're just taking a slight loss yeah, and you just yeah. get that money back out you put it in again. something else you will always have a losses i bet you've yeah. lost out on a product yeah. you're always going to yeah. everyone's always going to it's part of the game no yeah. business does not take a loss no. does not take an l on anything yeah. um just going into what i heard the other day and i want to hear if you've done mm -hmm. this a lot of people i've heard in seller circle recently have been going back to the leads that we sent in mm -hmm. october november mm -hmm. have you had a look at doing that yeah. yourself yeah, yeah. Um, i think it's a secret gem ah. <laughs> well, it's out there now cats out the bag now but no um, i actually got when i was here at the seller circle event in manchester um i got speaking to somebody and um he actually recommended that to me. He said, you know, go back leads. to the old leads and there's some absolute churners in there. So I've done that and lo and behold, like I've been selling things from three months back when I first started. I'm still selling, I was still nice. selling fantastic. So, nice. um, it's really fantastic happy, to hear that. That's music to our ears when you can yeah. buy a product, sell it for three months long and it makes you money every single day. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. It's mad. It might, might only be like, say 50p, but it's like 50 is better than, yeah, than yeah, zero. Yeah, yeah. 50, I mean, and 50p you know. sounds like nothing, but yeah. you sell you can do that 10, 20, 30 of them a day, yeah. and you do that, which even still, yeah, 10, 15 pound-ish, it's not major mm -hmm. money, but for a lot of people, that will pay for your lunch, that will pay for part of your dinner, yeah. that will pay for you know your Netflix, whatever. Mm -hmm. Once you do that a, from a couple of products every single day, then you think you're doing that 30 days yeah. a month. It's that power of compounding, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's just like small stacks to big stacks. That's like a, exactly. a, an expression used in trading all the time. You start small, Build small up. little wins, yeah. and yeah. before you know it, you've got a flipping money. And, and I suppose your money is better off like in Amazon on a product yeah. that makes you 50p a sale than it is in your bank account. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a lot of people watching who've literally got stacks sat in their bank account <laughs> yeah. doing nothing. And granted, you have to put in time to yeah. put in, you know, to make yeah. Amazon work. But like, if you're looking to, you know, compound your money, your money's only going down in value in your bank account if, like, if you really look at it so you know you may as well go out there put that into something and if you don't know what to put it into you know maybe think about putting it into amazon because again start it, small with it yeah start small make yeah. sure it works and you know i guarantee you know if you actually do it properly you will realize you'll be like wow like yeah. i may as well just start chucking my money into this like once you actually get going you, you may as well yeah, it's like attach, yeah. it's a numbers game and i know and i know oliver in a similar position you know he he obviously had like a decent chunk of money in his bank account to obviously invest once mm -hmm. he knew it was working he was like Phew, yeah, in it like, goes <laughs> yeah. into the cash flow cycle <laughs> like it's crazy it's and cra it's not just the benefit of making more money from the more money that you've already got in there I think I suppose maybe not for you because you've had entrepreneurial experience mm -hmm. before maybe, maybe so because it's a different field yeah. do you think Amazon also gives you a lot of different skills there's a lot of learning involved that you can take away and use for other things it's not all just the money as well yeah it? definitely like the foundations of it again like supply and demand like that just goes across pretty much everything you'll ever yeah. do you know that's what pretty much runs the world supply and demand especially when it comes to consumers and mm -hmm. stuff so like i've had to learn loads about that and 
now I'm like trying to learn about the economy and how all that works and it's like all relevant but yeah. it all puts you in you get stuck in a real rut with yeah, it, man, you can, it, it it's all relatable to business yeah, at the end of the you day know, and if you want to run a big seven seven figure business Amazon business then this is stuff that you need to know um, but naturally like you say Amazon teaches you it exactly um, buying and selling you can never go wrong that's not that's age old mate that's been yeah. going on since the beginning of time so this is like a school in the end of the day it's just something which you're just learning yeah. actively you're learning on the job as you scale up as you put more money in you're just learning more and more and more and you'll yeah. encounter new problems you encounter new issues but it's all it's all part of the game it's a yeah, learning it's all process fun and games, would you say you enjoy doing it yeah i love it to be fair i love it um well, I would re- I just recommend it to every like i'm already telling my family about it to be fair oh, yeah yeah i'm trying to get like my, <laughs> my mother-in-law yeah, she's coming round to look after the baby and she's looking at the items and she's like, what's selling this week yeah. and what's hot this week? <laughs> I'm like, you know. You've only got one kid. Why do you have 200 baby bottles in your <laughs> That's what I mean, honestly. And then there's actually, it's been funny, like some items that I bought from Boots, like Tommy TP items and stuff that I couldn't sell for whatever reason. I just give it to the missus. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so Brilliant. Keep Keep everyone happy. Happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's happy at the minute, so. Literally, I'm sure we've done that a couple of times as well. It's like you run out of deodorant or something. It's just like, that's a deodorant. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Boom. Comes in a nice case. Yeah. We've got a shower in there as well. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it's but you know what? It's, um, you can convince yourself to not do anything. Like, you know, you could just never take action and do something and mm-hmm. never take a risk, but you'll never get anywhere. So I'm just glad now that I took the, took the action and speaking for itself 100 percent. do you think there was a like a, re- a reason why you know, like you know you took that leap like was there a thought that like, i'm just gonna like you obviously watched the podcast you're just like i'm just gonna give this a go like was you just ready to like jump in on it yeah do you know what? it sounds a bit cringy but i just had like a good feeling about it i just thought like this looks good you know it's just something jake's like, magic nah, just, like, <laughs> yeah fell in love with jake a bit you know? <laughs> no but no it sounded it just sounded class and like obviously i like really resonate with jake and his personality and stuff and i thought i'd like to work with him and just like check it out and um yeah once i've seen that money mate money speaks doesn't it once you see that profit coming in and no sales being made it's addictive and appreciate it yeah 100 yeah, percent. i think I, I suppose as well it's not for everyone like you said you've done some training before yeah it's a completely different ball game to yeah. amazon you know yeah you're putting cash into both of them yeah. and that cash has been used but it's actually on physical products i think a lot mm-hmm. of people like it because in a way it very much is a traditional business it's you're tangible, buying products yeah. You're wrapping them up, you're putting them in boxes, and you're sending them out. It's such a traditional business, buying and selling. And I think a lot of people like that because it's not, you know, some wheezy online thing where you can't see what's going on. (laughs) You you don't understand why it works. You don't understand how it works. Where's the money coming from? You can actually see the product. You've got it in hand. It can't become more real than that. And I suppose, you know, getting those first orders in and having those orders coming in every day where it's, you know, such a good feeling when you're starting. It's exciting. So, I think we'll wrap it up there, Shane. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Appreciate your time as always. Great guy, always a great chat. Love to hear where you're up to with Amazon. And I think it's a fantastic story, you know, coming out of football and just wanting to sort of find something that really resonates with you that you're, you know, happy and content with, but love doing as well and can also scale up. So, I wish you the best of luck with it. And uh, we'll we'll obviously be staying in touch. No doubt we'll hopefully do another podcast in the future. Give it a year's time or so. We'll see where you are. And, uh, uh, we'll take it from there if anyone does want to get involved with seller circle make sure to check the links out in the description we're going to start doing more youtube videos more content in the discord mm-hmm. etc 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 check out social medias instagram tiktok etc all in the description if you want a one-to-one call with us as well to learn a little bit more about the platform what we yep. do answer any questions that you're unsure on click the link below you'll be able to book in probably today or tomorrow and you can have a chat with of us 100% and I think we'll leave it there guys just remember you know sometimes in life you just have to take action you just have to bite the bullet just like Shay's done just like everybody else in Seller Circle's done sometimes you just need to take that leap you know you can figure out exactly how Amazon works like we said we've explained everything today in the flesh of you know why it's all possible how it works how we do it so just my ultimate recommendation is for anyone who's you know thinking about it is just take the leap give it a try and you know you, you're never going to know if you don't try it so I think we'll leave it there thank you heard it here from Shay first yeah, there thank we go. you most important thing you did take action take action everyone Thank you.